people. So I do wonder if Cloud9 will have anything um, useful on the... Well, not useful, but anything uh, new t t for us to see on the T side of nukes. But we are on the C2 side of them at the moment, so we'll see what they have to show us. Then. Looks like Looking up a rush, just straight out the hut right now. Shroud with a great first uh, shot there onto Valens, already dropping one. All squared up, though, as uh, we see Elevate. Does he going to get dropped? And right now, it looks like the bomb is planted. So this is obviously, you know, a big, big moment here for Savage. Now if they can make this defense work, but they already have the bomb down. So they've already got that money secured. But can they win the round off the back of this? Looks like Cloud9 executing very well with these pistols. But wow, Glorian's coming in with two quick kills. But there is Hiko to end it all. And it will be a defuse here from Hiko. As we do have plenty of time. So again, that's, uh, you know, a pretty critical round. More critical than on other maps because it is a lopsided map for the CTs. But important that Savage did get the bomb plant down there. So should they choose to, and I think they probably will, um, they can buy on the second round. They may choose, I mean, I know Hades is is uh, an AWPer, so they may choose to uh, opt for the a third round buy. But I think they're going to be more concerned with trying to keep the Cloud9 economy as low as possible. So... I'm probably expecting the uh, AKs to come out on the second round here. So, sorry, in the, in the, yeah, on the second round. So, sorry, the third round. My mind's been crazy. Um, sorry, James, but you have got really eco. Late. You have got <laughs> the eco pistols here. So they'll try and get some damage in. Uh, nothing's on 57 HP. I think Cloud9 will be fine here. They shouldn't lose any players. Hades remaining with the bomb, but only one HP. So, uh, not gonna get very far. So they actually do manage to save all of their, their guns here. You know, no one on Cloud9 dying, so this is a fantastic start. Of course, as you mentioned, that first round bomb plant is going to mean the buy-up on the third round here for Savage. And we're not going to see any snipers from them, though. And obviously, that's totally fine. They even have uh, somewhat of a picking edge, having the AKs against the M4s and Famuses here. So this is definitely a round for Savage to, to pick up if they play the picking game. This is going to be something that could really work to their favor. If Cloud9 are smart, though, they're going to be denying these picks, knowing that there are AKs out there on the map, which definitely outperform their, their measly, measly Famuses and M41Ss. So we do see a, a pretty nice outside setup here. Senf is above, uh, but he's actually going to get taken down straight away. Looks like Hades is going to make the jump across, but Cloud9 still with a very strong presence outside. Going to drop Hades as well, so they are struggling, our Savage, to make their way outside towards Secret to gain this ground. Just taking the jewels, taking the picks. And Cloud9, they just don't care going for these uh, these pick situations, and they're down two players already. Yeah, so that's um, an early advantage here for Team Savage in this third round. There are 45 seconds remaining, and they are still yet to push a site. Nothing does get one back to make it a three on three. Uh, Valens does get the advantage back in the favor of Savage with uh, a, a Galil. He uh, went for a Galil by to get some extra nades in to make it a bit easier for his uh, team to push the site. And it has paid off as they do take down the entire Cloud9 team. Some of, the, some of which were, had FAMAS here. There was a Mag7 in the mix. So they could go for a buy here if they wanted to. Um, and they will, in fact. So we've got the M4s coming out and only one FAMAS for uh, Hiko who grabs some nades as well, so he's gone for the more economical purchase. Yeah, I mean, the, the only criticism I could really make is, uh, you know, Cloud9 just, just facing so heavily outside against the AKs with Famuses. I mean, it's uh, definitely would have been... Valens has changed his Galil oh. for a Mag-7, so I'm wondering Fair enough. I'm wondering if he's done this for a, an uh, expected eco. So I you can see the angle he's holding, so he can retreat if uh, if he gets rushed. I, th I think this strat here is the, the outside taking the secret, whilst he can just rotate through and through hut into vents with that mag, keep it close range at all times. Great wallbang there by uh, nothing through main to take out one of the uh, Savage players who will get a trade kill eventually on uh, Semphis. So Secret may be opened up to them. They are going to still loiter outside around uh, the uh, main area. So we'll see. Again, it is a case of pushing the sites. There are four CTs left. The bomb is down now and is completely exposed. There is going to come out for the response, but there is a bit of a double angle there. Dimor going to get another response. So Dimor being very on top of things so far. And we'll have to see how he can handle this one on two right now. He's got 35 seconds left on the clock. And we can see Sean Gares just watching for that double back here. As we do have Dimor committing to the lowest bomb site. Going to go through and nothing is there. 
and he's going to stop him from getting that plant down. So generally speaking, Savage, they got shut down outside before they could really do anything. And this was uh, very well done by Cloud9, uh, realizing perhaps maybe a read, maybe just a default setup, just you know having Savage run into it. But uh, by and large, Savage, they couldn't run their strat. And now, of course, we see Cloud9 looking pretty darn good. Okay, so we've got um, Dumont, who's brought down to $350, while the rest of his team have CZs under languishing around 1500 to 2500 So I don't know if if he bought too fast or if they have some kind of uh, interesting tactic here. Nobody else has got armor, so I don't know if, it, if this is a, a mistake on, on his part, buying when his team couldn't afford to, because I, I don't see how else it kind of makes sense here. It's well, they will have four players who will be able to buy up properly, so... It might work out in their favor. Do you want going for the pick here with this rifle? If he's going to be able to get it, obviously that's going to allow them to open up the ramp in here. It does look like Cloud9 wants to fight, initially losing Semphis, and Doom are going to catch off Sean Gares. If they're fast, they can get down to the lower site, but the rotation's already come in. It's so quick from the upper site here, using the vents, and of course they are going to just delay a little bit. It is a four-on-three situation, and we do have Savage slowly eyeing up the angles towards that lower site. Nothing, though, in long. Could be, uh, be very annoying for them. Long is going to be quite critical for them to take if they have any hope of getting that bomb planted here. Nothing. A key, key player here for Cloud9 to stop this push from actually working. Does manage to take down one frag. Shroud with another. And Doom are onto the bomb site though with very limited support. Only Valens left on his side. Going to go for the plant. Nothing. Surely going to go for the spam through the smoke. And he's not actually there. So well done there by Doom or getting the bomb planted. Valens now in a one on two. And Shroud comes in from the back. You do see the defuse coming in now from Hiko. And it is a well cleaned up round by Cloud9. Quite smart that Savage had the smoke out there to kind of throw the CTs off, allowing him to get the bomb down in a different location. Otherwise, uh, he surely would have gone down had the um, smoke not been there to draw attention away from that plant. And yeah, it was good. It was a good opening um, on the ramp there by uh, Dumore, and the bomb plant does allow him to get another AK this round. So turned out, uh, turned out that it worked for them. Although, had they not got the bomb down there, then he would have had. Like a fifteen hundred dollars less than his teammate, so probably wouldn't have wouldn't have been able to buy. So I don't know if it was like a calculated risk or a miss by there, but um, you know, it wasn't hasn't left him in a worse possible situation. So you see, Asempus putting some bullets into the players of Savage as they make their way very rapidly down secret towards that lower site. Hades making the jump down now. Hiko looking towards Squeaky. They are aware that there could be. A player coming from lobby. They haven't cleared it just yet. They haven't got a much of a read in it just yet. But here comes nothing from the back from Vents. Going to drop do more there as he does just slowly keep himself alive there. Making sure his teammates come in. Nothing for another peek there. Onto Long. Takes down Hades. There goes the triple for nothing. Taking them all down one at a time. They are stuck in the mud over in Long. And Cloud9 with another very easy cleanup. And uh, Savage definitely a bit worse aware now. Going to go for the eco. And this is uh, going to be... A, a really nice round potentially for Cloud9 to really build a very significant amount of money. Savage have won about 17% of the round so far. They're going to want to win about 33%. They won about 5. Um, the 10 5 would be acceptable here on this uh, T side of Nuke. So we've got a few more rounds to win. This is going to be an eco here, so I mean, we're unlikely to see anything. Looks like they're going to go for the uh, same success they had last time on a ramp, try and get a bomb down in B. Have got two people facing Semphis, and Semphis does go down, which means that um, they could be on something here. They still have control of the bomb with Florence, but he's not going to last very long. Gets taken out by Shroud, and uh, Valen falls soon after. So no bomb plant this time, but they are going to be able to uh, buy. Maybe not with an. Well, Florence could drop an AWP, but he's gone for a different buy. So looks like Savage not opting for the AWP at the moment on the T side of this map. Yeah, it does seem to be, uh, I mean, AKs, you can't really go wrong with them if it if the strat demands it. I'd love to see the, the wall of smokes outside from Semphis them. Semphis has no rifle um, at all. That's surely not right. Because it Unless. should show that he has something, at least. On, I, think it's, I think it's just broken. We're going to see nothing actually pushing out there. And Hiko is also chiming in with the frags. Semphis from this above position. Obviously, it's a really good you know, push for, you know, from them. It's combined on three angles from three different levels as well. So they just take out side by storm. They've done this uh, multiple times. They've really shown a great propensity to actually go for these aggressions and, and heavy positions. 
heavy investments on the outside. So far, Valence finds himself alone now, though, holding on to that AK-47. And the bomb is down outside. Obviously, this is pretty much a lost round. But if he could just do some damage, that would certainly be... Uh, and it he's killed one or two players, that would certainly benefit them greatly to really work down some of the money. Because if Cloud9 keeps you know, taking these rounds too cleanly, things are going to get a little bit awkward later on when finally Savage maybe do find themselves in a position where they pick up a round. Well, the Eco is going to be too far away, and that's going to be the, the sad story for them. Looks like Valen's going to pick up one kill there. Might just be good for some more, as Cloud9 may or may not be passive here. Looks like they're going to go in for the duel, and it's going to be Hiko. Let's take Valens down, but he did get one frag at the very least, so that's something. And we can already see how badly, uh, the, the well, how big the disparity is between the money of Savage and Cloud9. But uh, once again, the buy does come in thanks to that uh, consecutive round loss money bonus. So yeah, Savage is going to keep forcing it up here, just uh, going to cause as much havoc as possible. And Cloud9 with the double AWPs coming out, so I guess one's going to probably go towards ramp. Actually, Sempis looking to cover hot slash squeaky with it. And Sean Garrows is indeed going to be in the ramp area, so we'll see who ends up uh, seeing some action first. Could indeed be Sean Garrows here if D Moore chooses to try his luck, but he's going to be playing passive for the time being. Though just make sure no CTs are pushing and we'll try and exploit them if oh. they do. Hades actually got dinked there as, his, uh, as they were spraying through and were trying to actually hit his teammate. He was spraying, he was actually trying to wall bang. So that's pretty unfortunate for Hades there. I feel, I feel bad for him, but it's like uh, Senf is going to take down Elevate. And you know, the problem is uh, that Cloud9 have such strong setups, or they, they invest so much in, in outside, but we're not seeing the, the grenades come in outside to really deny this. And you know, a lot of these smokes and so on. Instead, Savage are trying to pick into the, into the picking um, of Cloud9. And obviously, they're in a much... A better position to do that, those kinds of plays. And they are just annihilating them one by one. We're seeing Valence now again. Last man standing in lobby. Going to be able to swap out that weapon for that AK-47 once again. Which is something. But still, even economic damage here is certainly not even going to really scratch Cloud9. Look at that assault. And the grenades from multiple different places. The peaking, the potential trade kills from... Uh, from Squeaky and the A-Site as well. It's a great defensive play there, aggressive defensive play by Cloud9, and make it 8-1. to one. Let's have it with only one round on the scoreboard here with uh, six rounds remaining, including this one. So they really need to uh, get some more rounds under their belt if they are to be in a good position to mount a comeback on the CT side, as we, as we saw in, the, in the, what we saw of the previous match. Just like they really want to go for this very fast play. It's going to come in here, and I can, can see what they're trying to accomplish, but Cloud9 going to just shut it down quite easily so far. Just do more rounds left, and no one even picked off. And I, honestly, I, what I really th I feel the dilemma for them here is that... So if, if as a team, them looking at the T side against Cloud9 right now, they cannot really just straight up rush. Well, okay, there's, they, they have to do it either immediately or they have to delay it a lot. Because if they do it immediately, maybe they can beat some of the timings of the positioning of the Cloud9 players onto the sites, as well as you know maybe beat out some of the pre that they throw. If they delay it at all, the pre will crush them. But let's hold that thought just a little bit. We'll return to, to their dilemma on the T side here, as we do see Cloud9 setting up for once again another defense here on the outside. But Glorious going to pick off Semphis straight away with the AK-47. There is a player boosted in Garage, funnily enough. Uh, it is Hiko. He's going to be able to hear quite a lot of stepping down towards Secret. So Cloud9 is nothing going to come in with a frag, but that's going to be all he gets. So they're not really going to stop the approach dead from Savage onto Long. And looks like they are going to go potentially. They, they could actually double back here. They've got a lot of options there. Four men against the three of Cloud9. As we see Hades back up the ladder. This is a fantastic position. Could just open up the upper bomb site, but he can't take down Shroud, even with the element of surprise. And Shroud will drop down to the vents now. Switching up his position. We see Savage could be on the verge of taking this round. Cloud9's defense is scattered now. Savage still trying to work out which avenue of attack will work best for them. Lauren's going to take down Shroud in the vents. Sean Gares with a shot onto Valens as they try to go for the bomb plant on the lower site. 
and Cloud9 have revealed both players at this point. So Savage, they know where they're coming from, but they just can't stop the rain of bullets coming in from Sean Gez. Do more will take him down, but Hiko should get the easiest of shots. And there it is. This does get the kill onto Dumore to take the round. And it looks like it could have... It, they had such a strong start. They put Cloud9 to so many awkward decisions, but they couldn't quite pull it off, James. Yeah, the, the uh, score is not necessarily reflecting the closeness of some of these rounds. However, it is the rounds that count, and it's 10-1 to Cloud9 here. So Savage running out of opportunities here to uh, get back into this game. I mean, the way things are going at the moment, they may lose the match at the pistol round on the second half. Very possible indeed. And you can see that they want to go for these aggressive picks, but largely the pre-nades are denying them. Dumor might just find the one-on-one, -on -one, and the shot is missed there by Sean Gare, so he's going to get the pick as well. So already two players from Cloud9 going down. So Savage, once again, going to get the advantage at the opening of the round. Zemphis with a quick double on ramp, though. They don't even spot him, and that's going to be it easily squared up, and better than that. They are one man to the good now, as they have Chlorins and Valens to deal with. And they still have held the important areas. They've not conceded any ground whatsoever as Valens goes for a peak. But we do see the smoke coming down on ramp as Glorans looks for a pick on upper. But they've got to try to figure out how to team play this situation, how to communicate to actually bring together a play to make this round possible. We do have Shroud up on rafters. Glorans coming in from Squeaky. Will to get an angle onto Hiko. It's one on two now. It does take down a player in the hut. Glorian's in a one on one now against Shroud. Can he make the triple real? He will. Glorian's gets the round. What a great spread on at the end there. And he will get them on the board with two rounds against the 10 of Cloud9. And this could, this could turn into something. Glorian's is putting in work for his team at the moment. He's the only guy with double figures at the moment. 11 kills. Nearest to him is uh, Desi, who looks like a sub from Team Elevate, which is, he, and he's on six kills. Hades have only one kill and 12 deaths, um, normally with the AWP, but uh, no such luck today. We're going to have Symphys taking the first kill on Desi there, as uh, Sean Gares just easily gunning him down with the Scar. So far, Savage this round not quite finding the picks as they were in the previous couple rounds. Goran's going to take down Senthis, but already perhaps too much damage has been dealt to Savage as they struggle with a very weak Glorins, a weak buy, and Hades in the defense area. They're going to actually take down nothing as well, but the positions are still held relatively well by Cloud9. It should be difficult still for Savage to find themselves a planting opportunity. Sean Gare's going to re-emerge from the lower side up onto ramp to see what's going on. Hiko there for the support as Shroud has the upper side on lock. So they're building together their knowledge of exactly what is going on in the map right now. As we see, Glorin's just waiting in the hut right now. They need to coordinate themselves into the bomb site, And here they go. All together, all three, going to take down Shroud immediately. Smoke for main. Going to have Hiko from above take down Valance. The bomb should get planted, though, towards main. And they do have... Oh, they did have a player. Two players to two players. Hades going to be left now. Oh, did he just run out of bullets? I think he did just run out of bullets. Going to have to get the hell out of there. They might just go for the defuse here. They got Sean Gares to cover with the Scar. In fact, they're both going to go for the peak. Perhaps not deciding who's going to go for the defuse. Hades comes in from the back. Oh my goodness, he's actually going to get the kill with the Glock. Unfortunately, it's not going to win them the round, but almost going to turn into something quite, uh, quite funny. But either way, going to have another round for Cloud9 as Savage do struggle. That was an awkward situation at the end for Cloud9 because the person um, who had the kit was the person with the M4. And uh, I think it was Sean Garrows there with the auto sniper trying to defend, uh, which was a little bit awkward because obviously you want the uh, more versatile M4 to defend with than a uh, sniper rifle at close range. Um, but they managed to eke out the round. And it is 11-2 in favor of Cloud9 here as we go into the second last round of this uh, first half. And looking at the money, you can see that Team Savage are on eco. Oh, so. <laughs> that grenade. That, that was painful, man. Oh, here comes another one. Oh, Clarence <laughs> down to 20. <laughs> Look how much damage has just been done by two grenades. There are almost like, three of them are just like significantly damaged. And uh, Sean Gares is going to go to town with the scar. And 
Should be business as usual here on ramp for Sean Gez. He's actually quite low. Going to consider just jumping down lower and get the support there from Shroud. He drops down from Rafters. And we're going to have Hiko coming in from Hell as well to help Shroud. They just get the spray down. And they're all falling there. Dirty alive with that P250. And he's not going to get anything, of course. So clean round there for Cloud9. And uh, yeah, going to get the last buy coming here for Savage. Usually, the rounds in which they find themselves with anything to work with is the rounds where they find the picks. We're not really seeing them able to scrap together uh, enough, well, any set plays or anything like that to really give themselves a, a strong chance on the entry into certain areas or bomb sites. So far, so good for Cloud9. Yeah, so again, you can see one player um, fragging hard for Team Savage, but it's not enough. His teammates need to step up to the plate in this last round. I mean, two rounds is not going to be enough of a... Uh, like that's a, that's a long road back to uh, victory here on the CT side of Newton. That, that is minimal mistake. Very nice from Glorens there. Gets the pick onto Sean Gares. Very aggressively angled. Do more also going to find himself the picks as well. We've seen this happen in the round previous. They've opened up ramp. They've opened up secret. Now Cloud9 have to scramble together. Just figure out, okay, what can we do here? As we do have Savage just relaxing at this point in time. Making Cloud9 move. Let them make the mistake. Here goes Hiko though. Does take down Hades. Very well done from Hiko. As we have Savage just you know, going back for this upper site. Dumore in the vent. going to pop up there, get the trade. Wonderfully timed there by Dumore, but he does go down to Semphis regardless. And we have Hiko coming in from main. He is smoked off. This is the only thing really helping off Savage right now. Oh, Glorins with a fantastic headshot there onto Semphis. And that's going to be the bomb down on the lower side. Hiko, is he going to be able to clutch this? He's in a one on two against Glorins and Desi. And it's like Glorins is going to take him out. So a 12 to 3 half there. Savage do put one more on the board, but it's still going to be very, very tough for them to actually come back in this. And we'll have to see how their CT side is. Yeah, here comes a critical round. As always, for Team Savage, if they lose this round, they're going to have to force up the following round. And uh, if they lose that round, then it's pretty much curtains for them. So uh, this is going to be all to play for. We saw how long the, how long the pistol round took in the uh, first match of tonight, and that shows you the importance of these pistols, especially on a lopsided map like uh, like Noob. So let's see what the T's have in offer for these guys, who seem to be playing passively on ramp with only Valens looking from a position where he can retreat. So it looks like they might be playing for the retake if it ends up being on B. Yeah, this is something we saw Neko guys do previously very, very well. And using using those setups, uh, uh, but actually speaking of which, it looks like Savage don't have anyone to really spot that much. That was kind of the beauty of how Netco guys played it before. They had um, players that were able to actually do a little bit of spotting safely to then fall back. They took some damage here and there, but they were able to then know exactly how to move around the terrorist side who were constantly on the move themselves. So we do have a nade going in there. Glorious readying himself with his own grenade but not hearing the stepping to really justify tossing it just yet. Going to see Valence falling back now, but gets caught in the back. What a reaction shot there from Valence over at Hell. And all of a sudden, Savage with two fantastic kills at the start of this round. Cloud9 not able to be make any ground much really here, apart from the outside. But that's what Savage has given them. Going to get the bomb down, though, on the lower site. And Savage perhaps a little bit too passive there. All five alive, but the bomb does go down. Shroud on the side itself. Looks like Sean Gare's going to open up with a frag on to do more. Shroud from below right now. Going to have to stay alive. He's got three players above him. This is going to be very difficult, very awkward. Does take down one player. There could be the second kill coming in from Shroud. And Hiko with number three. And that's going to be the round there. I'd, I'm struggling to understand how the bomb even went down without any CT players. Uh, even anywhere close to the lower site there. Yeah, there are some techniques to do that where you kind of, like you can throw a grenade through um, huts from lobby, which bounces off the window frame, blows up the vent and the door at the same time. Then you can uh, throw a smoke from roughly the same area, which often allows you to run through the smoke. If you know your time, you, you can run through the smoke into the vent without being um, fully seen by CTs. So, uh, and, then, and then there's a meter game of that as well, where if you do that in later rounds, then the, the second T who covers... Hut um, rotates to look at ramp as well, 
sorry to look at uh, Squeaky, and then you can just go through Hut and shoot them both in the back. But uh, first pick is um, from Semphis onto Hades. So Cloud Nine are one man up, and uh, we saw, we've seen this position from Get Right, which yeah, is really hard to detect. Right. So uh, let's Death see get right. if he's going to be found out here. Does he not finding any action in Get Right? So we have That'd to see. Uh, and, the, and the only reason for that is obviously, as we can see, Cloud9 then wrapping around towards ramp again. This is something that uh, Savage did or tried to do. Something that uh, we saw also in the other match with Iowa Power. They they did fond, uh, they were fond of this also. Sean Gare's going to go for the drop. Finds himself the kills on Valen. And right now, Cloud9 in a very nice situation where they should get the plant down and not really lose any players here. It's going to be very difficult for Savage to pick off any kills at these ranges with the pistols. Cloud9, very ready for this. We do have Desi, I think, moving from long. Does seem like Dumorg's going to get two quick kills, though, with the 5-7. Goes down to free health, and all of a sudden, a lot of good damage done on the economy. But look at this. Does it even matter? 14-3. to three. Cloud9 on the brink of winning this regardless. And we're going to see perhaps a bit of a force up here from Savage as they don't want to play for that overtime situation. They don't want to play the tie up. They want to play to win. Okay, so Glorians is going to buy a Mag 7 and no armor. So it looks like it's all on him to try and cause some early uh, problems here for Cloud9. And if he goes down, that's pretty much the round over. You know, a couple of Eagles in play. I always, always have faith for the redeeming one Deeks. Hmm. And uh, we'll have to see if that comes into play. Glorian's on the top of the hut right there as his teammates bust open the vents to drop for the drop. As we do have Cloud9 slowly making their way, you know, through through onto heaven position. Glorian's going to go down more or less immediately. And things are falling apart rapidly here for Savage on this kind of force buy. Bomb does go down. Not even a single player dropped yet for Cloud9. Desi not even able to make a kill either. So 15 to 3 and already... It's looking absolutely hopeless here for Savage as they need to get 12 rounds in a row to play for that overtime. Otherwise, they are done and dusted. And we do have the oomph. <laughs> I believe in the oomph. I believe. We've got an oomph. We've got a Nova. We've got a Deagle. This is uh, the force buy to end all force buys here from Team Savage. So they're going to be aggressive here. And this may end very quickly. So let's uh, see how this goes. The trades are coming in here. We've got uh, two for, two people down here for Savage, and that may be a third if nothing can connect. He does with Hades uh, and Desi. The uh, sub is going to be the last man standing here. He's in the lobby at the moment, and he may be able to take the first team. But it looks unlikely. He's going to run out of bullets soon with only a seven in the chamber, and that's going to be that. So Semphis going to get the last frag to secure the win. So 16 to three there. Cloud Nine, a very very easy. Easy sweep there. And something